Uh, thanks everybody, thanks for coming today. Um, we've got a presentation today on uh, hidden product dangers in the home and um, some of the topics are a bit confronting so uh, I apologise in advance for, um, for any, any, uh, any, anything you may take away that uh, is a bit nasty. But um, what we'll be looking at today is um, a, a range of products uh, and in particular we'll be looking at button batteries and magnets toys, um, small parts and also toys with filling, and blind, and blind and curtain cords. So hidden product dangers are those that are obviously difficult to see and the product itself may be hidden or otherwise go unnoticed, or the hazard it creates such as choking or internal injuries isn't immediately recognisable. Uh, babies and younger kids uh, are most at risk of these dangers. Um, why? Well it's a natural part of their development to uh, put uh, explore their surrounds and put things in their mouth basically um, and uh, they're associated these products in particular are associated with some pretty severe hazards that can uh, lead to the death of a baby or small child what's going on okay thanks so luckily there are ways um, that we can prevent uh, these hidden dangers and um, we'll talk about where to look for them and how to find them and what specifically to look for and steps you can take uh, firstly, uh, we're going to um, use our choke check uh, um, handout later on and you might want to pull out a 10 cent piece or something that, uh, that we can use later. So, button batteries. Lithium button batteries are often coin sized and the energy they emit however is uh, very powerful. They're used in a range of common electrical household devices such as keyless entry remote controls bathroom scales and also musical greeting cards and for a hidden and severe hazard to young children these are very common. Um, a 10 cent coin can get stuck in a child's throat and a 10 cent coin sized battery however can not only get stuck it can burn through tissue in as little as two hours and so this morning at our stand just over here in front of the play area we prepared a demonstration using two slices of uh, lunch ham with a button battery placed between them and this is uh, just over two hours ago. You can see the uh, burn through the ham. Um, we're doing these demonstrations uh, throughout the day and at our stand uh, just to show you how quickly and easily and silently these kind of severe injuries can happen. Kids who swallow button batteries often need complicated surgery uh, or multiple surgeries to repair the damage and they need feeding and breathing tubes to recover as the button battery can burn through different organs such as the esophagus and stomach. Uh, in Australia it's estimated around four children a week present to an emergency department with a button battery related injury. Uh, we're going to play a video now to, um, to uh, just uh, reiterate the, the dangers associated with the batteries. There is a little known threat in your home. It's a small item, the size of a 10 cent coin, and it can cause big problems for your child. You can find it in everything from remote controls to singing greeting cards. More than 100 kids worldwide have sustained severe injuries. Belinda says her one-year-old was playing in his bedroom and 25 hours later, doctors found a battery stuck in his throat. 10 operations, 23 x-rays and nearly two years later Hunter has started to eat normally again. Two-thirds of his esophagus was removed. If swallowed the battery sets off a chemical reaction and can cause severe burns to the esophagus. Here we have the bathroom scale down on the floor ready for the kids to play with. But think again. battery-related child deaths. Eleven have died in the last seven years. KidSafe says the majority of these deaths trace back to a common device that most of us have in our homes, a remote control. Keep batteries out of reach, get help fast, tell others. OK, 
Okay, so um, we also have some uh, more videos on our website which you might be able to uh, have a look at. But luckily there's some simple things you can do to prevent these uh, types of in horrific injuries happening to your child. Uh, so as mentioned, button batteries power some pretty common uh, and accessible electronic devices. And the first thing you can do is go around your house and check which electronic devices use button batteries. And then make sure all battery compartments are secure. And once you've done this, make sure the devices are placed out of your child's reach. If you have any spare button batteries, make sure they're in a secure place also. Out of sight and out of reach. And if button batteries are flat, uh, dispose of them safely because flat batteries can also be dangerous if they're swallowed. And finally, it hopefully never comes to this, but if you do suspect that your child swallowed one of the batteries, go to a hospital straight away and tell the doctors and nurses that you think the child may have swallowed a battery. Don't let your child eat or drink, um, not even water, and don't induce vomiting. Okay. Moving to magnets. Small, strong-powered magnets uh, can be used in toys and play objects, and they make great objects uh, or components for sticking things together, obviously. Uh, toys with magnets must meet strict safety requirements by law, including labelling and testing. And certain small, high-powered magnets have been used as adult desk toys, and some of these products have been banned from sale in Australia um, and other countries, including the US and New Zealand. And magnets are heavily pr regulated to protect children for critical reasons. Magnets, again, obviously stick together, and that's what makes them the, the hidden danger if they're swallowed. Um, if more than one magnet is swallowed, then they can lock together through the walls of a child's intestines and cause perforations and blockages. And children can also suffer serious infections if this happens. Um, it requires urgent and often complicated surgery to remove magnets in order to avoid serious metal, medical complications. However, there's a few things you can do to ensure your child doesn't swallow magnets, and they are to obviously keep small high-powered magnets out of reach. Um, toys with strong magnets or magnetic parts that are small enough to be swallowed should be kept away from young children. And check all toys with magnets and make sure the magnets are securely attached and can't come off easily um, or are embedded in the toy. Always dispose of toys if their magnets become loose, and if you suspect magnets have been swallowed, again, seek uh, medical treatment immediately. Okay, moving to choking hazards. Um, choking hazards are another hidden danger and can present themselves to your child in a few different ways, as small toys, as parts of toys, or as small objects that are lying around. To a small child, these uh, things are very interesting and they like to put them in their mouth. Um, other choking hazards are also suffocation hazards, um, and toys are... Uh, Products, um, stuffing inside of toys, uh, dangerous fillings um, also present a, a serious hazard. Bean bags are also very, very common hazards. Uh, items that can cause choking can also lead to suff suffocation and loss of consciousness. If a small object, toy or filling gets stuck in their throat and blocks breathing, they could obviously suffocate. And polystyrene beads uh, that get stuck in the throat, inhaled or swallowed, present uh, particular hazards because they don't show up in x-rays. So just going to show another video now um, on uh, a test on small uh, stuffed toys and show you the hazards associated with um, the products. So this is a test on a stuffed toy that's um, actually a required test. All toys are required to pass this particular test. So the stuffing inside the toy presents uh, a significant hazard to, to young children. So now we're going to make our uh, choke check tool. Hi everyone, hi. Uh, I'm Janelle. So um, you would all have a choke check tool with you. So they're really easy to make. Um, so basically you just pop the card out. 
Just be careful because it is actually paper and it can rip. So looking at the pink side of the card, you're going to get this little, uh, little elliptical shape here, little um, oval shape, and try to slot it through this, uh, this slot here right in the middle. Try and do it without the microphone. And then all you do is simply lock in the other two tabs along the edge. So just pop them inside. So it should be the blue side showing all around. So just pop these in like this. Lock them in. And now you have a choke check tool. So basically anything that can fit completely through the top end of this tool is a potential choking hazard for a small child that likes to put things in their mouth. Thanks, Janelle. Uh, yeah, the, the size of the choke check actually replicates a, the a esophagus, size of esophagus in a uh, child under the age of three. And uh, as Janelle said, anything that fits completely inside the, the choke check is a, is a choking hazard. Um, there's simple things you can do to reduce or remove choking hazards, and uh, they are to keep small objects and toys away from young children small toys that is from young children and check if a toy or object can fit into a cylinder basically the size of the well the choke check and if you don't have the choke check like an old film canister or the um, pencil sharpener casing um, always check that toys and objects given to young children are not able to release small parts and keep toys for older children separate and away from a young child's reach for, so the under three's reach under three-year-old's reach uh, these toys are likely to be small or have small parts that young children could uh, choke or swallow. Um, always check and follow the age recommendations and information that comes with toys. Age grading is there for a reason. Um, it's not. Uh, it's there for developmental reasons and also to uh, prevent choking hazards. Um, again, obviously, if a child becomes sick and has difficulty breathing, or if you think a child's uh, choked on some small part of a toy or other product, then take them to hospital straight away. Okay, moving to blind and curtain cords, another hidden danger. Uh, many Australian homes have blinds that come with cords or chains and curtains or other window coverings can come with cords or chains as well. We often see blinds with their cords hanging, otherwise the cords are tied to the wall by a cleat or a tensioning device. And if the cords or chains, sorry, it's the cords or chains that are the issue, not so much the type of window furnishings you choose. Why are blind and curtain cords unsafe? Well, the severe hazard these products compose is, uh, cho is choking and strangulation, uh, leading to loss of consciousness and obviously possible death. Looped cords that become tangled around a child's neck can very quickly cause strangulation, which can lead to, again, loss of consciousness or death. And children can become entangled in blind and curtain cords if they try to use or play with or play around the window furnishings, window coverings. Um, and even with high coverings, children can climb onto window sills or furniture to access the cords. Um, cords have also strangled uh, infants while they've been sleeping or playing in cots which have been placed near a window where cords are within reach or hanging, or hanging into the cot. And the statistics can surprise um, 16 Australian children have actually died between 99 and 2013 as a result of uh, blind or curtain cords being looped around their neck. So what you can do is obviously check all window coverings throughout the house for loose or looped cords that can that can be within reach of your child and um, also you want to make sure they're not within reach when they climb on furniture or, um, or, or other um, products that they can actually get access to cords. Immediately tie cords out of reach and uh, obviously do it anywhere you're staying including on holiday and make sure you move furniture away from, um, from the area of uh, blind cords so that children can actually climb on them to, uh, to access them. Okay, so there are many ways to find more about our unsafe products and um, how to check for safety. And other than our two websites at Product Safety Australia and the HCCC website, we have a free range of videos 
and even a couple of apps you can use. And the Keeping Baby Safe Guide contains information on over 30 infant and nursery products um, and there are a lot of ways to, that you can access these products. We're also on Facebook and Twitter and our videos are on YouTube as well. And if you haven't seen our store, we're over this way just in front of the, um, the small play area. And that uh, brings us to the end and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much.